Uh, I want to bring in, uh, I want to bring in uh, Professor Salvatore Babonis. He's a sociologist, uh, very well known here in India. He's live with us from Sydney. Uh, Professor uh, Babonis, thanks very much for your time and being with us, uh, uh, you know, uh, to bring us these live reports from Sydney. Incredible pictures, you know, that have become so familiar. This is signature Modi. Every time he lands, there's all this adulation, you know, Indians sort of falling over each other to try and, you know, meet with the Prime Minister. You, you know, you've seen this thing over and over again, city after city. What do you make of it over there in Sydney, Professor? Well, of course, I, I wish I could be part of it. <laughs> it's such a, it looks like such a great party. But yeah. uh, look, I'm not inside the uh, hotel. That's for the diaspora. That's for the people who, you know, who really mean to need to be there, the people who it means a lot to emotionally. You know, I have a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've been thrilled to be so embraced by India. But, um, you know, really, this is an event for the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And it's organized by them. This wasn't... Anthony Albanese inviting Narendra Modi to attend a stadium event. This was the Indian diaspora yeah. inviting Narendra Modi to a stadium event and inviting Anthony Albanese to join him there as well. And I think that's something everyone in India should be aware. This massive reception has not been put on by the Australian government. It's been put on by Indians themselves. Yeah, yeah. Very true. And, uh, you know, this, this connect that the Prime Minister, the Indian Prime Minister, has with that diaspora, it's an enviable thing, isn't it, Professor? You know, not every world leader actually has that. All world leaders visit different countries. But the kind of connect that uh, uh, Narendra Modi has with diaspora Indians uh, is a rare thing. You know, you don't see people coming out, inconveniencing themselves late at night outside a hotel. I don't know what the weather is like. Uh, you know, just to get, oh. you know, maybe a few minutes with the Prime Minister, if at all. Well, this is Sydney, so the weather is, be <laughs> the weather is beautiful. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a problem. Lucky you, it's but, about 45 uh, degrees here. <laughs> but no, uh, it, it really is something that is unique to India and the Indian diaspora. There's a massive Chinese diaspora here in Sydney, Australia. The Indian and Chinese diasporas are roughly at the, exactly the same number, depending how you count, to half a million to three quarters of a million yeah. strong. But the Indian diaspora is growing more rapidly. The Indian diaspora is also more likely to put down roots and stay. So the Indian diaspora is now overtaking the Chinese diaspora. Mm. Now, when Chinese diplomats come to visit Sydney, it's a big yawn from the Chinese diaspora. They have absolutely no interest because these are not their politicians. These are leaders who are leaders over them, not yeah. leaders who report to them. Of, of course, when an Indian politician comes to visit, especially if it's Mr. Modi, but even if it's anybody else, uh, I mean, when members of Lok Sabha come to visit, they get a crowd here in Sydney in a way yeah. that no Chinese parliamentarian ever would. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, w while the Prime Minister was in Japan, Professor, uh, you know, you did see a lot of Indian opposition leaders, you know, taking pot shots at the Prime Minister, uh, you know, sniping at him, uh, you know, during those photo ops while he was being hugged and, uh, you know, someone was touching his feet. Uh, you know, there were a lot of cynical things being said by opposition politicians here in, in India. What did, you know, what do you make of that? Is it frustration? Is it jealousy? Is it irritation that the Prime Minister still enjoys that level of sort of personal popularity? No, I don't think so. Politicians are politicians, and the yeah. role of an opposition is to oppose. Now, let's be clear, if the opposition were to denigrate Indian state symbols or the president of India on a state visit, that would be something very different. Yeah. But yeah. we have to remember always that however popular Narendra Modi may be, no matter how emotional many Indians may feel about him, he is a politician and a leader of government. He is not a head of state who is a symbol of the nation as such. Yes. So I know many people treat him as a symbol of the nation and you know they have every right to do so but mm. uh, you know there's nothing wrong with an opposition opposing. Yeah. No absolutely. Uh, in your view and you know you, you've, uh, you've watched uh, the Prime Minister's visits, you've seen uh, you know you've been to India a couple of times Professor. Right. Uh, in your view, in your assessment, what do you think Prime Minister Modi has done for India's image abroad. You know, this is a time of great flux, right. of transition. The world is changing. Uh, you know, the, 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 the order of things is changing in the world as well. Right. In your view, what do you think Prime Minister Modi's role has been in changing the world's view of India? 
It's not Mr. Modi who has changed the world's view of India. It's the Indians who have changed yeah. the world's view of India. It's very much the diaspora. Now, Mr. Modi is popular among the diaspora. That's fine. But uh, you know, even he recognizes, I'm certain, that it, it's, not, it, it's not him personally hmm. whom other countries want to talk to. It's him as the representative of India. And when they see the Indian diaspora coming all out to see him, to, to meet him, to welcome him, I mean, a stadium event like we're seeing in Sydney tomorrow is simply, well, it's, it's I was about to say it's unprecedented. That's not true. It is precedented one time by Mr. Modi's last visit to <laughs> Australia, uh, yeah. and that is the only precedent for this event. Now, you know, other world leaders don't get that kind of reception, even from their own citizens abroad. So yeah. what gives Mr. Modi such gravitas abroad is the reception given to him by Indians abroad. It really is all about the people, not the politicians. You know, as someone who lives and works in Australia, uh, you know, from your experience, Professor, how has that image changed? You're right, you know, it's not just about Prime Minister Modi, it's about the diaspora, it's about what's happening here in India as well. How has that image changed from your perspective? Indians used to be seen as potential service workers. Uh, yeah. you know, now, there was never an environment in Australia like in the Persian Gulf where Indians primarily worked in construction and you know, were highly exploited. There was never any kind of that exploitation in Australia. But there were a lot of Indian restaurant workers, a lot of Indian delivery, uh, d delivery bicycle riders, you know, th these sorts of occupations. And other Asian and South, you know, Southeast Asian, South Asian nationalities are still seen in that light. Of course, the difference is that Indians in Australia are now seen primarily as professionals. Hmm. That is, there may be some Indians who, you know, nothing wrong with working for a living, you know, who operate a convenience store. But, you know, if the mental image people have of an Indian in Australia is very much of a doctor, an engineer, an IIT person, a business person, an investor. Uh, remember, yeah. India is a major international investor in Australia, and that's not all about Adani and coal. I mean, mm. there's also, there are also other coal. There's, there's Wollongong Coal, which is, uh, which is related to the Jindal group of companies, but there yes. are also the technology companies. All four of, the, of India's big technology outsourcing companies have a major presence in Australia. So certainly when people think Indian in Australia today, they think professional. Professor, uh, last question. Are you going to by any chance be at that big stadium event tomorrow in Sydney? <laughs> I, I hope to be. Look, I, I have been invited. I have a ticket, but I do teach for a living. A lot of yeah. people think I somehow run around, you know, <laughs> boosting India for a living. But I do teach. I have a class to teach tomorrow afternoon, yeah. and I'm hoping that they will let me into the stadium uh, a little bit late uh, yeah. to yeah. get past security. We'll see. Okay, I hope they heard you say that right now on the show, and they'll make a <laughs> note of it. And we'll see you there tomorrow then. Professor Salvatore Babonis, thank you very much for your time. Good to see you there Great in Australia. You. You've got better weather than us. I think the whole world has better weather than us here in <laughs> India's national capital, sadly. But thanks very much for your time, Professor. Thank you so much.